Hey MMA fans, Cage Minds, your host Micah Frankel, here to keep everyone up to date on the news that's going on in the world of MMA. Well, the last event from the UFC was on June 8th, and that was Demetrius Johnson versus Ian McCall. The highlight of the event was bad refereeing and strange judging. One of those strange judging calls was Mike Pierce winning a split decision in a the most dominant split decision I had said I ever saw. 30-27, two judges for Pierce, and 30-27, the complete opposite way, one judge seeing it for Hocha. That was actually a mistake again by the judges somehow wrong name or something but Mike Pierce does get a unanimous decision 3027 rectified across the board other news going on upcoming events for the UFC UFC 152 headliner and co-main event are set don't believe the rumors Cain Velasquez is hand is fine Junior Dos Santos Cain Velasquez 2 to headline UFC 152 and Josh Koscia couldn't bring BJ Penn out of retirement, but Roy McDonald does. Roy McDonald, BJ Penn, co-main event, UFC 152, the future versus the legend. Should be a great welterweight matchup. Moving not on to talking about more welterweight news. UFC 154, big huge news. Georgia St. Pierre versus Carlos Condit, welterweight title match, UFC 154. Co-main event, Johnny Hendricks versus Martin Catman, a number one contender match. The welterweight division getting some clarity. UFC 154 highlighting the welterweights. Move that on now to some other news about more events that keep changing. UFC 149 was supposed to be headlined by Jose Aldo versus Eric Koch, featherweight title fight. Say supposed to be because, sad to say, Jose Aldo at, is adding his name to that walking wounded being injured Aldo is off the card Eric Koch will wait for his title shot so now the Uriah Faber Henan Burrell interim bantamweight title fight is move, being moved from 148's co-main event to 149's headlining main event giving the two some extra time to figure each other's styles out put together a game plan be at their peak shape to compete against each other and also Uriah Faber sounds scared, saying that Barrow is a much more dangerous opponent than Cruz. Don't know if that's disrespectful, but I like Barrow's chances in this fight. Moving on to other happenings. With Hector Lombar and Brian Stan not being the main event anymore of UFC on Fox, they need a new main event. That main event comes in terms of Shogun Hua versus Brandon Vera. Anyone want to raise their eyebrows? How does Hua versus Vera make sense? Hua, because he's a legend, because he's a former Pride champion, a former UFC champion, is not wanting to treat himself like a fighter coming off of two losses. Also, the UFC needs a main eventer. He is a solid name. Vera is a bigger name than Glover Teixeira, and he's an easier fight than Glover Teixeira. Shoga not wanting to fight Teixeira and lo lose to someone that he feels doesn't have enough name credibility thinks that it's a smarter fight to take on Vera, Vera, a winnable fight. So Brandon Vera, Shogun Hua, UFC on Fox 4 main event. But keep in mind, everyone really wanted to see Glover Teixeira in that spot. But Hua wouldn't do it. Hua probably beats Vera, though. Move on to that news. With Vera being out of his fight with James Tehuna moved up to a main event on Fox, he's off the Fuel 4 card. We'll have him replaced now by a heavyweight coming back, cutting some weight, Joey Beltran, a teammate of Brandon Veras, is going to come back. The Mexicutioner will take on James Tejuna, UFC on Fuel 4. More UFC news. In September, the UFC going back to England, going to Nottingham. Two fights that were announced right away. Ultimate Fighter alumni, Andy Ogle versus Akira Kanasani. And then also, One Punch Brad Pickett taking on Eve's Tiger Jabween in a Bantamweight scrap. Can't wait to see both of those. Should be fun. An event back in Lin England. More UFC 149 news in a strange turn of events. Last week we reported on Babano Fernandez signing with the UFC and was to take on Roland Delorme. We were prepared this week to announce that Babano was injured, DeLorme will still stay on the 149 card. Well, DeLorme's still looking for an opponent on the 149 card, but Babano, turns out, never actually signed with the UFC. They had verbal agreements, but 
no actual signatures. Bobano is a free agent. He's still looking for a home. Doesn't sound like he's going to land with the UFC. Most speculation is that because he spent most of his career prominently in Asia, that he could sign with the new promotion, 1FC, and stay in Asia. So Bobano, just looking to wait to see you get back and fight wherever he lands up. Other news for this week, Derek Brunson is going to be stepping in for Terry Martin at Show Fights versus Kendall Grove on Saturday, June 16th few days away and this will be the show fights middleweight title fight from what I understand you've got the 14 and 10 ultimate fighter former winner Kendall Grove who's 2 and 1 since being cut from the UFC after being up and down losing to some really tough competitors at the upper echelon of the division will take on Derek Brunson undefeated strike force fighter his contract allowed the wiggle room to let him fight for an outside promotion so we'll see that this Saturday that should be a great scrap Bellator news this week Bellator signs Vladi Vladi Mina Akov who is 8-0 a 6'3 inch 235 pound Russian heavyweight uh, trains out a team fight nights he'll be entering into the Bellator tournament that's great Bellator needs more heavyweights. Cole Conrad needs a challenge. Michael Bisbee news this week. He's mad at Hector Lumbar because Hector Lumbar might get a title shot if Lumbar beats Boach. Bisbee's injured. Don't know why he's mad. Um, Lumbar's getting the same treatment that Jake Shields got, that Alistair Overeem got. You come to the UFC, you win one fight, you get a title shot in your division. That's the way other organizations, champions, come over and get to the head of the UFC. It's the way they've done it. Also, Bisbing thinks Sonnen is scared, shaking in his boots, scared of Anderson Silva. Sonnen didn't believe that Bisbing was actually injured. It's turning dramatic soap opera s for my money. But Bisbing's injured and he's mad at people and he's talking because his mouth isn't hurt, just his leg. So, this has been Cage Minds with MMA News. Thank you for watching. Uncage the war within yourself. Hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. Have a good one.